excited to host you and to, to lead this conversation or this um, panel discussion. I'm Shayna Stevenson. I'm the Chief Brand Officer for the New York Liberty. Um, just a fancy title to say that I oversee marketing for the team. Um, and to my left is Kiri. Um, Kiri West, and she is our senior graphic designer. So everyone on this panel works for the New York Liberty or works on the New York Liberty as a brand. Um, and today's conversation, um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll reverse. So today's conversation for Black History Month um, is themed a pathway to sports through the arts. And the general theme for Black History Month this year is African Americans and the arts. And so we thought it would be a really great way for us to just talk about what we do and how we use we've used art as a way to create a career in sports you know as a way to also reinforce and be um, real life examples of if you love to work in sports if you are an athlete you don't have to be a professional athlete to have a career in sports there are so many so many other entry ways into this industry and using your art or your passion for art um, or creatives as a way to achieve that is possible. How many of you would consider yourself artists in here? So what what do you do? I sketch sometimes, but I'm usually do, I do a lot of stuff and singing. And singing, yeah. what about you? I'm a fashion designer. A fashion designer, okay. What about you? I do hair and sometimes fashion. You do hair and sometimes fashion. What? Who else raised their hand? Music, dance, <laughs> videography. Okay. Photography. Yeah. yeah, I think that's wonderful because I think so many times when people think about artists, they think about people who physically paint, and it's such a broad category, um, it's, su it's such a broad way to express yourself creatively, and there is not one way to just be an artist either. And so all five of us are different representations of art. Um, come to life. So, okay, so back to the intros. Carrie West is our senior graphic designer, and next to her is Charlie Desaudier, and she is our social media coordinator. To my right is Chrissy Long, and she is the senior director of entertainment. And on the end there <laughs> is Corey Moore, and he is our videographer, our team videographer. So I'll start off with our first question for everyone on the panel. Uh, Charlie, I'll start with you. What initially sparked your interest in the arts and when did you make the decision to use that as an opportunity to pursue a career in the sports yes. industry? So I've always been into writing since I was like in elementary school and then found my love for basketball in middle school and then it just carried over and just like bloomed in high school. Was over our newspaper, covered all things sports, even commentated football games. Didn't know a lick about football, but I was just so into the game that I was like, I want to try everything. Did broadcast, writing, all of that, and writing was my true passion. And so now, Charlie, talk about what your role is specifically specifically for the Liberty. For sure. So I run all of our social media channels from Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you name it. Um, so my job is really to be the voice of the Liberty. So I work alongside with Corey and our other videographer, Elvin, our photographer, Brandon. Um, and just, we collab together, we create art, and I post it, and just create the voice for our team. And Carrie, same question for you. <clears throat> yeah, um, I, the spark for me came really early. Um, when I was a little kid, I used to go in my dad's old sketchbook, he used to be an artist as well. And so I would finish his drawings, he would draw like these graffiti characters, and it would look so cool, and I was like, I could do this as a living? He was like, yeah. And uh, my parents just pushed me into doing that. Um, and I was also athletic, so I played basketball. Um, that kind of led me to college and paid for my schooling. Um, so there was like a plan there from the beginning, um, and it kind of worked out. Uh, and then I got into the you know advertising, um, was doing a lot of sports um, brands like Nike, Foot Locker, things like that. And I was like, oh, I'm not really close enough to the game. You know, mm -hmm. I'm too far from the athletes. I don't get to see any games. It's more of just about the fashion, the product, and just selling the clothes. Um, so I. When this opportunity came, it kind of seemed like the perfect match, you know, basketball and art, it kind of mm -hmm. worked out for me. Chrissia? Yeah, so dance has been my driver for my art. Um, and I've always been a dancer since I was little. My dad was a DJ, so the music and being in that environment 
um, but they pushed me into dance class. I went to high school for dance, I went to college for dance. Um, and then my dance journey, as I was doing different dance jobs, I became a Nick City dancer. And while I was a Nick City dancer, I also earned, interned for New York Liberty. So I got to learn the ins and outs of game presentation and how entertainment collabs with the sport and why it works and why both are needed. And now I oversee the entertainment board, the liquidity, and the Brooklyn Nets. So, yeah. And Corey? Well, I always loved basketball growing up, and I took a couple of video classes in high school, and I found an interest for that, so I decided to combine the two, and here I am. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so the, the through line here is just having a natural passion for something and finding that finding that finding a way to connect those together um you know they're both former athletes and just a love for basketball has kind of created this space for them and as someone who works closely with all four of the panelists on here i can say that I think that the natural beginnings and the natural interest that they had in sports um, and their combined love for the art and their skill set has helped, um, has given them an advantage in being extremely successful in their careers, especially when I look at uh, Kiri and, and Charlie and being former women basketball players and how do we represent the voice of the players who are also women basketball players for the Liberty or how through the art that Carrie's creating as a graphic designer, how do we make sure that we're still cap capturing their femininity, but also their strength as an athlete. Having that real perspective, I think is something that is what makes them really special in, in their roles, which leads me to my next question. Um, it is Black History Month. So I also want you to speak to why the importance of having someone like you black men and black women um, in these roles matter. So Chrissy, I'll start with you. Yeah, so to be completely honest and transparent, um, when I worked for the Knicks, um, I felt like my voice wasn't being heard from a cultural perspective. And once I became, got into this role, I understood why culturally I had a responsibility to make sure that the things that we represented it from represented we represent from a basketball perspective, from a dance perspective, had a level of authenticity to it. And we know growing up in different cultural things that we do that we have to make sure that it's done right. And I think that for me, that's super, super, super important. Charlie? Piggybacking off of what Priscilla said, when I was in college, like I felt like my voice didn't matter in my sports program, felt like I was at the bottom of the totem pole. And so I was just like, I feel like when I get to the spot that I wanna get to, I wanna be able to help somebody else with the same dream that I had. And at the time I had the honor of like interning under somebody who was like my age now. She's like 23, 24 years old, I'm 20 at the time. And she made it real for me. And so I was just like, I have to pay it for it. Corey? Well, I think it's like, it's important that you have somebody to look up to. I'm not saying that you guys gonna look up to me, but like, <laughs> it's just important to like, it's just, it's just important to see like somebody that looks like you in the spot that you wanna get to or like at the level that you wanna be at. Have you had a lot of that in your career? Um, I would say Brandon, Brandon yeah. Todd. Um, he's like this big content photographer person. So I look up to him a lot and like just the stuff that he's done and like the, um, Stuff that he's covered and everything that he does, I look up to him. Carrie? Um, yeah, I think it's very important. Um, just because I didn't really have anybody look up to as far as a graphic design role that looks like me. They're usually like uh, white males. So that's like kind of the thing as far as like advertising. So when I got here and I seen you guys in like leadership roles, I was like, oh, it's possible. This is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's yeah, definitely important just to see like what the possibilities are as far as a black man. Corey, I'm going to come back to you. So before working at the Liberty, you interned at Rutgers mm -hmm. and you covered women's sports at Rutgers. So, and I don't want to generalize, but I think most men would want to cover male sports. So what was it about women's sports that really piqued your interest and said, this is really what I'm passionate about in the lane that I want to be in? Um, I think I really like the underdog. I think it's just really important to like, I guess, um, give the voice to the voiceless and like just uplift the people that you normally don't see have the spotlight or a platform. So I think it's really just important to feel that way. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I see that as like story, it's like the underdog part is also about storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. And there's so much underrepresentation when we think about women's sports. And so to have people who are genuinely interested in finding those stories and telling those stories for women's sports is important. Charlie, you have taken our voice to another level in terms of the storytelling that you do um, through a platform and a channel like social media. Um, so talk about how you've been able to successfully maintain that voice and the consistency in the storytelling. For sure. I think like being a black woman, I use that as my advantage. Like I talk how I talk to like my girls in a group text or whatever. Like when I'm making captions and stuff like that, like I want it to be personable. And I feel like I've really been able to like create a relationship through our channels with like Gen Z or with, you know, our audience in general, just by authentically being myself. Yeah. Um, Carrie, what advice would you give to artists who are looking to build a career in graphic design? Do we have any graphic designers in here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say if you're just starting off, uh, try like a bunch of different things. Don't try to get caught up in trying to do just one type of graphic design. You know, kind of broaden just to see what you like, because you might like something that you didn't think you'd be into. Um, so like I worked in advertising, so that kind of led me into different things. So I got to do like experiential design, print design, graphic design, social media design. So that kind of helped me gain experience um, for this role here, because we kind of do a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing would be just to post like all the all your work. Don't be scared. Like if you don't, even if you don't get likes on social media, just post it because you never know who's gonna see it. So I would just say yeah. As far as like artists on general, like. Everybody like just post all, all your work that you do. Don't, don't be scared to post your stuff. Let's talk about social media a little bit. I think, you know, it's so easy to compare, you know, yourself to what the next person is doing and they're getting so many likes and I think I'm more talented than them or just as talented as them, but I'm not getting the type of engagement and the follows and the likes that everyone is doing. How do you stay focused on you and, and on honing your own identity and not comparing yourself to the next person or feeling like my work isn't good enough and my my artistry isn't good enough and it's not going to be as successful as the next person that's for anybody i feel like if you're an artist like you have to hone in on that fact like if whoever your creator is like for me like god gave me this talent so i'm gonna stay in my lane i'm gonna do what i can with it and that's just that like I look at other people for inspo, but you can't, you know, compare yourself where you're at to somebody else's journey because you don't know what they went through to get to where they at. Anybody else? Yeah, I would say for me, it's not about validation. It's about a feeling like art is supposed to transfer a feeling. And if you're feeling that feeling, then there has to be somebody else. Like you poured something into it. You poured your heart into it. Then you should share it because someone else is going to feel it. And the validation of people liking it doesn't matter as much when your actual heart is in something. Gary or Corey? Oh, I was gonna just pick you up what uh, Jacia said. Um, like your work should be more of like a reflection of you. So it shouldn't really matter what like other people think because it's like your work. Um, so yeah, kind of going off what she said. I also do think like, if you feel like somebody's work is better than yours, then strive towards whatever you like about it or you know strive to be that be at that level like and if you think your work isn't as good then that should be your motivation to like get better and learn whatever you want to learn to get to whatever level you want to get to and i would add that people will help you and give advice like don't be afraid or too shy or even too prideful to reach out and ask for advice or to make an introduction. I think, you know, everyone started from, started somewhere, right? And so even for myself, when I think about where I was and I didn't have anyone that looked like me um, doing what I'm doing now, for that reason, I like to be that to other people. So I like to make sure that if I get an email, it might take me a while to get back to them, but I eventually do respond to them and I set up whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes to just talk to them. Um, and answer any questions that they have. I think, you know, it goes a long way, especially for people that look like us in this industry. There's There's been 
a lot more representation, but there's still not enough, right? So we do have to be um, intentional about reaching down and, and help pulling up others as we climb um, along the way. Um, Charlie, from W Slam to the New York Liberty, how has your writing and work evolved and what do you envision for the future of social media for women's sports? I'll start with the last question. Um, okay. I think that social media is a great platform to tell stories. And so I think just like furthering the conversation of women's sports and like highlighting who these women are on and off the court, you know, they do a lot of great things outside of basketball. And I feel like that's really what I want to do, you know, via social media. And then can you say the first question? Um, how, how has your writing and work evolved? Um, I think with time, like finding inspo through other, you know, creatives and then just like, um, just, I don't know, just growth over time, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Also internships, you know, like Corey started as our intern in 2022. So he reached out to me, just sent an email. Um, and at the time we weren't even hiring interns yet, but I met with him, was impressed by his work. And I was like, reach out to me in a couple of months when we start to hire. And he did. So follow up. And now he's working here full time, and this will be his third season with us. And then Charlie, um, before working for us, she worked at Slam. Um, was that a full? Was that in like a part time? So I interned with Slam for like a year and a half. I went on to do freelance with the company for like a year, and then a couple months after I graduated, got hired on full time for like six months and got laid off. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be open at the time, you know, the opportunity might not be exactly what you're looking for, but you know, if it, it'll help you get your foot in the door, you can build relationships, network with people internally, um, then you know, you should you should definitely consider it. Uh Chrisia, what advice do you have for dancers looking to dance for a, for a, for a professional sports team? Um, the advice that I would have is to not limit yourself to a, a professional sports team. I think that when it comes to sports teams, the cool thing is um, they're looking for versatility. So if you put yourself in a box and say, I only want to do this, then most likely you're limiting your opportunity from anything else that you could do because dance is such a big, big world of different things and different opportunities. Um, when, but when it comes specifically to sports, understanding that when you were a dancer on a sports team, you were also a brand ambassador. And that's what sets you apart. It's not just about the dancing, it's about how you present yourself, how you speak, how you can actually represent the brand. And that's a, like 50% of the actual thing that it takes to get you to book the job. Tell us a little bit more about your journey, how you transitioned from dancing to being a choreographer to now producing the halftime performances and managing Ellie, our mascot. Your, your your career is has been so unique and um, I would just love for you to share more about what you do. Absolutely. So like I said, I uh, started my journey in sports and entertainment as a mixed city dancer. And for that, like while I was there, I was like the token black girl on the team. And what I wanted to do was, you know, you're a dancer in New York, I'm still trying to take every opportunity and Sports and entertainment is something that stuck with me because I felt like it was so inter interesting how they both intertwine. So um, I was put in a very uncomfortable situation and I, that's the key here. Always put yourself in uncomfortable situations when I was offered the opportunity to intern while I was still dancing on the team. So I would have my uniform on, I'd put the headset on, I would listen in to like, oh, why, why is the dance going right here? Why is there a promotion right here? Why are all these different things happening? And it, gave me the experience to run the show from the inside and on the outside because I was doing it, physically doing it um, with my body and with my brain at the same time, if that makes sense. I was learning in that way. So now that I'm able to oversee my teams, um, I'm able to respect them in a way because I understand how it felt to be them, one. Two, I want to, I have a certain vision for what I want my teams to look like because I don't want there to be a token black girl and I have control of that. So I want to make sure like culturally my team looks a certain way. Um, and three, it's for me when it comes to 
dancing, it's not just turn on the track and, and do a cute dance to it. It's always about storytelling and really holding on to that storytelling part of it because that will add on the layer of authenticity. Um, now, when it comes to Ellie, um, how many of you are familiar with the New York Liberty mascot, Ellie the elephant? Okay. How many of you have been to Liberty Games? <laughs> All right, so you guys need to come to a Liberty game. Um, and so Ellie, Ellie the Elephant is the New York Liberty mascot, and she's had several viral moments um, over the past year. Um, one dancing with Little Kim, she went viral for a dance she did to Cardi B. And Chrissia is the person who manages Ellie on a day to day and has really been instrumental in just um, helping Ellie grow and flourish. Um, so you can share more about that. Yes. Yeah, so honestly, when um, Ellie, the creation of Ellie was coming, I knew how important the previous mascot was to the brand and understanding and knowing that I wanted to make sure that the fans understood why we were doing the things that we were doing and how it was different and how it was growing. Um, and also like being collaborative as a creator with the actual character, soul or character yeah. that's in Ellie. Um, and it kind of grew over time. Like we, uh, we produce half times um, all the time, but opening night always belongs to the mascot, belongs to Ellie. And I really truly feel like whenever we create that, um, that the person who we're surrounding halftime by, so the first time it was Mary J. Blige, the second time it was Lil' Kim. You take a little bit of that every single time um, and you're creating what the character feels like. And it's not just about the performances, it's about the interaction of the fans. Like, what are the fans getting out of Ellie? Um, and then, again, if you find someone who is talented, let their talent release. Yeah. Like, let them, don't put them in a box because they're going to actually add to your creative vision. And then it's like a, a conglomerate of just creativity. And I think that's how Ellie was created. Yeah. Yeah, the person who is Ellie is an entertainer, is an artist, is extremely talented. And so we've been fortunate to allow Ellie to just be Ellie and really, to Chrissy's point, come to life when they're in that costume. They're from Brooklyn. Um, that's the only thing I'll share about <laughs> Ellie's identity. But, you know, we were very intentional about wanting someone who was from the community, um, you know, someone who really understood what Brooklyn was about and could bring that to life at our games. And so um, with their talent and with Chrissy's vision and my vision and, and our CEO's vision, we've really been able to, to take advantage of that and, and capitalize off of it in a big way. Um, I think we're going to, where's Allie? Right. We're going to do Q&A, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So any final like word of advice, each of you can give like one piece of advice and then we'll open it up for any Q&A that you may have. So it's here, cliche, but oh. don't limit yourself. Like whatever, whatever you dream to be, don't limit yourself. I would say, and I already said this before, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, um, not being scared to do that, but also understanding how important relationship building and mentorship is. Like I would not be where I'm at, I'm at right now if it wasn't for my mentors and you have to pay it forward. Um, once you, once the mentee becomes a mentor, it's just gonna continue to grow. And then you have your set of people that are just going to become family and grow together, so. Um, I'll say this again, don't compare yourself to others and don't be afraid to ask people, you know, for advice and network. Um, I would just say, keep going. Um, don't stop, don't let anything stop you and don't let anybody dim your light. Um, yeah, and just stay creative. Stay creative. I'll add, um, Today you might not be where you want to be, but just know that the, the dots always connect. Like it's never going to be a straight line. There's going to be a lot of detours along the way. But when you're really tapped into your purpose and your passion, the dots will always connect and you, it'll make sense. Like it might not make sense today. It might not make sense tomorrow, but eventually it'll, it'll make sense. 
can I add one more thing? <laughs> Sorry. Check your energy. Yeah. People really kind of focus on energy now. So a lot of times, and, and I see from, uh, I want to say maybe 18 to 25, you don't realize how powerful your energy can be. So if you're coming across a certain way, people just don't want to work with you. They don't give you a chance to showcase what you can actually have because your energy is so you have to really, really make sure when you're going into these spaces that your energy is giving off what you actually have inside. Any questions? Say your name. Um, I'm Deshaun. Deshaun. Um, I want to create content for like streaming and like upload like, like I play 2K a lot. So I want to like upload highlights like that I do in the games like in the record and stuff to like my TikTok, but I don't, like, I'll be playing around a lot, but I, I want to know, like, what's the basic, like, basic ways to start creating content for streaming, like, or for, like, people that want to follow, like, and how can I do it at a acceptable pace that, you know, it can, at least in a couple months, like, you never know, like, I'm not trying to ask for, like, the key, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to, like, get a little, little back door. For <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so like you're asking yeah, like, I, I, I probably I, ask a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just ask straight up. I do, I do, I, I, I take a lot of video clips of my highlights when I play 2K, or Madden, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I have TikTok, but my TikTok is not just, like, I ain't gonna find that. Like, I ain't lit on TikTok at all. So I wanna know like, what's a, 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 a quick way to like, not a quick way, but just get to like promote it better and like, Get people to like, oh, no, it's yeah. nice. Oh, yo. I think TikTok is big on like sounds that you use. Like, it, it can't, it doesn't even have to be like related to the video. Just, I think it's really I just like sound. sounds and trending sounds, whatever's trending. And then for streaming, sorry, what's this? For streaming. streaming? I can tell you have a, like a, a great personality. So, like, how do you how do you present yourself like on a funny people? <laughs> <laughs> so, right? Honestly, just like keep genuinely being you and like let that personality show because people attract the personality. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Go ahead. And I think the first step is just posting it. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be like a big thing. Like post your work, put your caption, put your hashtags, put like three hashtags on there, and put it out. And then you'll reach your audience. They'll start coming. Just, and be consistent. That's too. what I was going to say. Keep being consistent. Like post like a couple days out the week, then amp it up to every day if you can, and then weekly. Like get in a groove of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, don't box yourself in two K matter. Play other games. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, stuff that you wouldn't even imagine. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my my nephew is eleven, and he started a YouTube account because he streams. He mostly plays um, Fortnite though. And he's not big, but he's had some videos that have gone viral for him, like, you know, a few thousand views or whatever. And some of it is captions, some of it is just kind of luck. But to, to um, Charlie's point, you have to be consistent with it. And don't, um, don't think like, oh, I don't have the best camera or the lighting isn't the greatest. I think that is where you get in your head and you start to limit yourself and you doubt yourself and talk yourself out of it before even giving yourself a chance or an opportunity. So I would again say like, if this is something that you're really passionate about, then upload it to what, you know, what Charlie said. But also to what Corey said, let your personality come through. So if you talk in smack while you're gaming, like record that. Talk smack in the captions. You know what I mean? Like that's what people um, are going to ultimately connect with. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, I would say like. Reach out to people like, say you want to do sports videography. Reach out to your college or like reach out to local sports teams and just ask them to record. Nine times out of ten, though, they'll want like somebody to record it. So just. Um. So I think like at a baseline level, I don't think you would, but um, with that experience, whatever um, whatever stuff you're recording, you'll get that portfolio and you'll like 
begin to develop like work and all that, and you'll have something to show for it. I have another question. Um, would you feel like a life you find a muffled? <laughs> Do you feel like in life that you need a life leash? Like, you know, some people say you kind of got to be good at something mm -hmm. to get somewhere or have a job in one thing. Would you say like it's easier to just be like broad or more like? Miscellaneous or spontaneous, I should say, mm -hmm. or is it good to like stick with what you need to know or find something you need to know or stick with? So, I want to go back to your first question. Um, why just use your social media as a way to upload your art um, and share it? You know, I get emails all the time from people who want to shoot our, our games, and the first thing I'll do is go to their Instagram. So you don't need a website, you don't need a you know fancy portfolio. Just create an Instagram page, and and that can be your portfolio and, and how you can showcase your work. Um, what are you interested in in shooting? Um, well, as of right now, I want to create something for like my business. I'm looking to start like, my own company. Okay. Just use your phone, you know. But I want to get like I want to learn it from a professional, but, like stand for myself. Like. So YouTube University is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I um, have learned so much from YouTube and have taught myself so much. I'm not like a video editor like Corey, but um, I've learned how to shoot, you know, basic stuff using YouTube, edit basic stuff using YouTube. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you use that as a resource if you don't have the time or the opportunity or resources to actually like take a professional class to study um, in some of those, um, those areas. So I would say that. Again, you can start with your iPhone and then build up to buying other equipment. Amazon has an expensive equipment that you can use and um, to help with your, you know, your your career. Um, so I would say, you know, you can start there, but you should start. Like, don't again, don't overthink it. Stop procrastinating. I would say just don't sleep on the phone. Like if I'm not using their videos, like I'm capturing stuff on my phone and it performs just as well, if not sometimes better. So don't sleep on that. And what was Yeah. What was your second question? Um my second question was your life leech. Like do you feel like you need to have one thing that you're good at and like the speed or I would I would say no for, for that. I I think that I mean you always have your driver, the thing that like maybe might interest you the most. But for example, I'm also interested in fashion and I'm able to utilize that with costuming. Like I literally am able to design the costuming for each team. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think that maybe there's a focus that you should have, but because when you have your hand in too many buckets, then you can't really commit to the thing it is that you really want to. But if you have a broad spectrum of things that you're interested in, try to figure out a way to commit to focusing on each thing at a time. Wait, we'll get to your questions. Did y'all have anything to add? No. I agree with Chrissia. Um, and I would recommend, how many of you know who Gordon Parks is? OK. So Gordon Parks, amazing photographer. amazing photographer. He was also a director. He has so many disciplines and such an, an artist and a visionary. And he wrote a book called A Hungry Heart. It's his autobiography. 
And that was something at a time that I read multiple times when people were telling me that I was trying to do too much and I mm-hmm. needed to just focus on one thing. Mm-hmm. He didn't focus on one thing. He did everything and he did it well, like exceptionally well. I'm no Gordon Parks, but I'm saying all of us have, could have Gordon Parks in us. And that same drive and determination to just say like, no, like if God gave me this vision to focus on or to be interested in multiple disciplines, then I'm going to find a way to be able to tap into all of those things. Um, And I can speak personally for myself, like that's how I've been able to excel at my job by just having, you know, a vision and an eye and a love for so many different um, interests. And I've been able to successfully figure out a way to combine all of that and, and, and deliver it through the work that I'm passionate about doing. Um, Go ahead. What's How your you name? Doing? My name is Norman. Hi, Norman. Um, I have like a two-on-one question for you and Mr. Entertaining Man. Because this is very, I'm actually like this, I'm happy we in because this is very important. To me. I kind of like want like both of y'all positions. It's kind of something I really would love to be, particularly because basketball is a, it's like one of my main passions, but I also love the entertainment. So like she said, a good halftime show with a sports that I love is, it's good. So, like, my question is, like, what's the best way to put yourself in both to help you out? Or, like, which one is better that can lead you into the other, either way? Meaning, like, physically playing the sport? Versus- yeah, I play it, too. But, like you said, you don't always got to play the sport to be part of it. I just want to be... So, where do you in play? The, I play, like, I play semi-pro basketball right now, as we speak. Like, that's, like, I just want to be a part of the culture, community, like, growing up, like, that's what I do. Like basketball, I felt like it helped me in multiple. Like you get in trouble as a kid. Mommy used to get me mad. I'm going to the court or whatever. Like, you feel me? Like that was. It was always easier to go to the basketball court than doing something else and getting myself in trouble. So, right. but I love the entertainment too. Like if you've seen the Super Bowl halftime show, like mm-hmm. come on, y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it could be a little bit. That like All Star Weekend. F- 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 forget it. All Star Weekend period in basketball. It could have been better than what. It's not like the same as it was when I was growing up as a kid. So it's like I love the entertainment, but I also want to be. Like she said, she do marketing too. So I also want to make the big decisions and to make my team better. But I also want to make sure my fans and my people have a good crowd. So it's like, what's the best way to like get myself into that? Or how can I? I would say like if you're already playing semi-pro, right? Mm-hmm. So create an entertainment idea for your team. Like maybe it's a, a content piece mm-hmm. that has uh, maybe it's a, a new art, up and coming artist, a rapper, somebody that you know, doesn't necessarily have to be dance or whatever, but it could be a good marketing tool for your team to introduce the team. Or maybe it's someone that you know that during one of the quarter breaks or during a halftime of your own game, you can put on and say, hey, like, I think we should add some entertainment to this game that I'm playing. And it might shock people, like, because they're not used to, like, oh, this is just, we're just supposed to be here watching you play basketball, but wait, like, this is a new element that you added, and now you can put your name on that, and you have the experience of how the crowd reacts to it, because that's really the most important thing for game presentation, is how the crowd reacts, Mm -hmm. um, regardless of if you think it's good. So I would say utilize the tools that you have now. You know basketball, you know your audience, you know your fan base. How How can you connect to them with entertainment and the fact that you know how to play? I agree, and I, and I think as as a player, you know the kind of environment that hypes you up, you know what I mean? So what is it? Identify those key pieces that really hype you up and, you know, that you think might be lacking or they could ramp up a little bit and, and be able to, you know, speak to that and come with ideas. I think there's so much opportunity. Sometimes we, we feel like that's not my lane or that's not for me, um, but you have a different perspective than the next person, right? So don't just ignore that. If you if you see something, say something, right? And if you feel, yeah. So I, you know, that that would be our our recommendations. Thank you. You're welcome. I think you're my right name next. is Elijah. All right. Now my question is basically for like all of us. Now let's say I got all these different talents, but I don't really know like which one to focus on, or I'm trying to combine it and market myself at the same time, like, how would I go about that? Like, to, to figure out what I'm going to focus on first and, like, but how to put everything together at the same time. What are your talents? Uh, I mean, music. We all play basketball, but okay. music, um, you know, like, light feet, stuff like that. Uh, I edit videography. Um, yeah, photography. 
Mm. What are you doing now? Like, which one do you think you are dedicated most to now? Mostly my music, because it's like, like, I was, like, certain subjects in school wasn't my own best subject, but, like, when it came to English, like, I was always a good writer. Okay. So, but that's what, I've been doing music since I was, like, eight now. My older sister, that's where I learned rap from, uncles, things like that. So, it's like, but. It's like I got stories to tell, but I don't even know how to tell them. So, but it's, I don't know, I got a lot of going on, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be lost on like, like, what to really focus on. Like, let's say I'm good at basketball, whatever the case may be, and I want to do basketball, or I'm good at this, and I want to do that, but then this one is better than this, so I'm trying to do it. Like, how do I put them all together, or like, yeah, just at the same time, still put them, because entertainment and basketball, you know, it's coincide. Yeah, they're related. Who wants to take this one? I would say when it comes to Light Feet, you know, the Light Feet community, she you're creating music. Mm -hmm. You have to create the music that goes with the culture. So automatically those two things go hand in hand. So right. if, you, if if you're creating, again, going back to what um, we were just talking about, a content piece that is storytelling, pick one story. You say that you like to tell stories, pick one story, write the music that goes with it, mm -hmm. and then your Light Feet can speak to what it is that you're trying to portray so you know so, them right? you know the light beat dudes right because i'm like i know a couple of them i know a couple yes, of them so they are that I'm about to say, you know, them. Now, one of my friends do the light beat so that's what i'm saying when you said you do that i'm thinking like do you like interact with them too because they be on no absolutely and i've learned so much so much from the light beat community even from um them coming from street dance yeah, to now right. being on a corporate side and having to I make sure that you are in rehearsal, it. make sure that you are. So like now that they're getting that, the business part of it, they're able to use the business part to enhance their talent. So it's all gonna go hand in hand. You just have to give it a chance. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, also known as Pretty Boy Pat. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Is this your your line? Yes. Your merch line? Yes. Right yes. 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 oh, oh, we got a code too. Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't play. We don't play. The sweatsuit's coming soon. Okay. You heard? Okay. As y'all can see, I'm fully been investing in my brand, in my passion, in my vision. Um, just being in spaces like these uh, is just so motivating because having your own brand, dealing with setbacks and things happen like that, like it's, it's hard, you know, to keep going. You might lack motivation some days. Like, um, you know, what I do at Youth Justice Network, just other than being an entrepreneur, um, it's just inspiring and motivating people, telling my story, helping people get to be the best version of themselves because, you know, um, it's not easy. Right. And just because it's not easy doesn't mean it's impossible. You know, um, I know I'm supposed to be asking questions, but I just feel the energy in this room is just so amazing mm -hmm. to see each and every one of y'all be in our position because when I walked in here, I'm like, oh, I wanna have a big office like this. I'm gonna have a space like this when I'm that boss. And you know, when you think highly of yourself, the people that are still getting together, they asking questions of, you know, where they wanna be and how they wanna get there. Just seeing y'all have that position is just confirmation to all of us letting them know like, it's, it's possible and it's, it's gonna be that way. You know, I have mentors, people that need mentors. Everybody that's asking questions, you need mentors. You cannot do it alone. You're gonna need somebody to push you into that lane. You know, when you don't know where you're going, they're gonna push you in that way. I've had people, you know, been afforded to be with big brands and sit down with people in big positions and stuff like that, but not knowing at the end of the day, you have to know for everybody that you're the biggest brand of them all. You're the biggest name of them all when you sit in these rooms. You have to say what needs to be said, you know. Um, the question <laughs> that I have for you guys, um, I'm sorry, the energy is just amazing. You know, I, I just, I just love when passionate people come together that look like us and don't look like us and come together on one accord to just come together and not be in competition, not want to say, oh. Like, you got to talk to me. You got to give me 500 to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Information is powerful and y'all just giving it away for free and everybody can take advantage of this because, okay. you know, you never get, you know, you don't, you, you don't get this a lot. Most people oh, yeah. don't have the time to sit down. Time is valuable. Yeah. And so um, I just want to say that first question I have for y'all <laughs> is one thing you would tell your younger self or one thing you would tell your younger self and the second 
the second uh, question. Not really a question, I guess. I, I mean, I just, I just want to pick y'all brain and see where y'all at. Um, and the second thing is, one thing you would change in your journey of getting here. Mm-hmm. Just, just, to, just to see how y'all mind. Happy. That's <laughs> <laughs> Which question? That's why we're What I tell my younger What I said earlier is to keep going because I, I kind of just repeated what I was. I, I've been telling myself for years to you guys. Um, it's just to keep going because I feel like I've been through so much life-wise, career-wise, um, that I wanted to stop. I wanted to quit, but I just didn't. Um, and I'm glad I did it because I kind of ended up working out in the end. Um, it's not even the end. Well, not the end. We're still, like, still going. Yeah, but like I've kind of always wanted this job, so like to me, this is like, oh, okay, I kind of made it to where I was thinking when mm-hmm. I was younger. Um, what was the second question? <laughs> One thing that you would change in your journey. Uh, change? I wouldn't change anything because I feel like it worked yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. Um, yeah, I'm good on where I'm at. Take care of that, Carrie. <laughs> um, something I would tell myself is don't worry about what other people think about you. <laughs> and I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Um, one thing I would tell myself is like own who you are. Like be a hundred percent who you are. Like really my career started to take off for me when I tapped into me, you know. Um, big balls and all that, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 no, like, but I used to, I used to wear my. I was all, I wasn't always natural, but when I went natural, I used to straighten my hair, and I would never wear it like this in work. Why are you regular? Yeah. 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 Now, you know, I like, noticed that all oh, black women was wearing your, your natural hair. Yeah, I'm like, damn, son, that's a blessing. Like, you know, it's like but like when I started to wear my hair like this, that's when I felt my most wow. yeah creative, free, like truly me. So I would say just own who you are, like really tap into that. Alive and free, right, Mo? That's yeah. what I'm just saying because it it mine's is similar. Like I felt like I was too black at one point because mm-hmm. I was the, the token black girl on the team right so that means that they didn't know what a weave was they couldn't help me like oh well everybody else can get their hair done but you can't but you have to look like that so figure it out oh your butt's too big oh you're this and i felt too i felt afraid to be too black and i would change that i would say something about it Mm. i would say no you got to take care of my hair like you take care of everybody else so Mm. now i have the power to control that and make sure that all my black girls are taken care of mm-hmm. and they understand the right way and the way they are is perfectly and that's why I chose them to be a part of the team. Um, one thing I would tell myself is that it's not impossible. Like I always grew up wanting to be a part of the team and here I am, I'm a part of the team. So it's, it's not impossible. It's never impossible. He's our MVP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, one more, Alan? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. One more. I've been stretching. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my question was, um, all right, so my question for you all is, what advice would you give someone who's interested in, like, breaking into the industry, whether it be sports, you know, Sports. art, music, dance, whatever have you? Um, what advice would you give? I guess if that person doesn't have linear experience or say, you know, you guys all – was blessed to like get internships or prerequisite experience that you know blessed me with this position that you guys have now. But what advice would you give someone who didn't have that traditional linear experience? Like, oh, you got all the prerequisite experience. Like, you know, I think you'd be perfect for this, for this position. What advice would you give them? I'll start. I, I think being a part of an organization like this is great. They expose you to these opportunities. Um, so take advantage of that. If you feel like any one of us can be useful to you, I would say connect with that person after this. Um, be patient with yourself. It's not going to happen overnight, but you definitely have to make yourself available. So, you know, if, if, 
understanding the game operations is important to you or understanding what, what Chuck D does on his, or Charlie does on a social media perspective is important. You know, ask if you could shadow her for a day or ask if you could come to a game and shadow, and you know what I mean, any of us. So um, I would, you know, but you have to raise your hand like you did in here and just kind of speak up to what it is that you really want. Um, and people, like I said earlier, will be responsive to that. Anybody else have anything? Well, just from a dance perspective, like you're in New York City, like that's the best place dance that exists. So there's so many different events, there's so many different classes, and you just have to be seen. Like you have to be seen, you have to connect, and you just have to be there. Like, and having now social media and the internet, there's so many different things that are going on, whether it is a dance class or a battle or whatever it is, just making sure that you are there, but you're there intentionally. Like you're not there in the background, you're there to actually like make connections. I will say speak up, like, you never know what email that you send is gonna change your life. And I sent my email to Shana, not expecting a response, just sending it, but she responded. You know. really be like, it really be like that though. Like, it really does be like that. You gotta really believe. She is exactly. Oh, wow. You dumb Yeah. So, first of all, thank you.